So over the past few months, there's been a lot of discussion about the great tools that are available for Pix and Sight, notably Blur Exterminator. But one of the cool tools that I have been playing with a lot recently is the generalized hyperbolic stretch. There's definitely a more than one way to stretch your images in Pix and Sight. We're going to talk about it here on the channel. I'm Chad. This is the Easy Astro Images channel. We are going to collect some photons today. So what's happened, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Nothing but clouds here over the past few months, but that's okay because we have got all kinds of fun stuff to play with. Now, I want to talk about the GHS or the Generalized Hyperbolic Stretch Script. And it's been out for, it's been out for some time now, and uh, it's been pretty popular. I see some people on YouTube using it and some people saying that they want to get into it as well. And I've been practicing and playing around with it. The instructions here on what it is. There's a lot of good resources out there, some videos to watch to learn exactly what this is all about. And really, I'm not going to try to get into the technical details on what it is and how it differs from everything else. I just want to show you guys how I've actually been using it and getting awesome images out of it. So let's jump to PixInsight here real quick. I've got two different images that we have set up here, clones of each other. They've had the usual treatment of like dynamic background extraction, spectrophotometric color calibration, a passive blur exterminator, and now we're kind of at that point we, we are ready to stretch. Now, I like to use some drag and drop methods, you know, because we like to make everything as easy as possible here on the channel. And using one of Bill Blanchon's linked RGB stretches, we can just drag and drop that here. And you can see, boom, we've got a very good start to our image here. We've got lots of nice fine dust and all this stuff. I did do a video on my Pleiades image before, so you can go back on the channel and check that out if you want to. But what we're going to do now is a comparison to that with the GHS script. So what I'm going to do is just pull it up, and whenever you download it and install it into your repository, it will be here. They also have a process icon on it, but haven't been using that. Just It's way easier and better to use the actual script. So we're going to pick first what image we're going to be doing, and we're going to be doing just the regular auto crop. And if you have a screen transfer function applied to it originally, it'll ask you to turn that off. So this is what you'll be presented with here with your preview window and everything else. So when I see people demonstrating this, they basically will show you kind of like your histogram here. And the whole point that I used to think with GHS was to basically turn that peak into as wide and flat of a histogram as I could. And I followed a lot of different tutorials and stuff and never really had good results. But I have recently kind of been playing around with things and figured out just a way better way to do things and how to control things a lot differently. So we are zoomed in all the way here on our image. And what we're going to do is we are just basically going to start stretching it here. And we're going to click on this little thing, this tab here with the stretch factor. And we're just going to start moving that up. And you can see that it is of course, moving and brightening everything up. Once I get to a certain point, I'm going to pull my zoom back down. So usually, you know, you want to pull this stretch factor over a pretty good amount and it'll take your, you know, computer PC a little bit of time to kind of pick up on everything. And usually I end up somewhere between like a six and an eight. And, you know, what people want to say is, you know, you kind of want to get it to a point where you're satisfied with your background. So, you know, if we drag and drop, you can see that we know this is background here and it's definitely, you know, too light. So we need to darken that up just a little bit. So I think that looks pretty good to me. You can try clicking it up and down a little bit. I don't mind having a little bit of gray. So if we reset our zoom, that's kind of like what our first stretch is going to look like right there. Now, at this point, you could start playing around a little bit more. But what I like to do is just go ahead and apply that first basic stretch. 
And if you take a look at our image, you know, we've got just this nice flat image. You can see all of this dust and stuff that's coming out here way more already than we have over here, but we are not done yet. So this is where all the magic starts to happen. So we can actually start getting into the individual spots and pulling those out. So I'm going to reset everything here down in the corner and I'm going to just click and drag up here on this nebulosity and I'm just going to kind of click inside here where you know this nebulosity is and you can see when I did that it put a little yellow line right here on the histogram and that's called our SP value our stretch point and so we're going to send that actually to down here and say this is where we want to apply our stretch so I want to reset my zoom here and now when you get to this point, what we're going to do is we're going to start playing around with these sliders here. Now, if you just start pulling your local stretch intensity over right there, you're going to see that nothing is going to happen. So we're going to put that back down and reset that to zero. So we're going to take this stretch factor and we're going to pull that up just a little bit, maybe to like around one or two. And you can see that it is just stretching this part here around that actual yellow line. And then what we can do is start slowly moving over the local stretch intensity just a little bit at a time. You don't want to go super crazy. You know, if you go real crazy, you're going to see that it's going to start doing, you know, really crazy things with your image. You know, you might like that. You might not. But I've found that it just works really good if you just go in nice small increments. Now this works awesome with one shot color data, but if you're trying to stretch three individual channels, it could get a little annoying. There's definitely a lot to do for sure. So we got that stretch applied and you can see that we are kind of stretching this out and bending things and that kind of stuff. But again, if you compare the two different stretches already, you can just see just how much more detail we have and everything that we're able to pull out. And it's not really blowing out our stars or anything at all. At this point, sometimes people would actually like to stop this and maybe pull the stars out and just start working on everything individually. But the good thing about GHS is it really t does not affect your stars a lot. It kind of will contain those, which is great. If you did like a histogram transformation type of a stretch, it's going to just keep blowing your stars out at the same time as well. So there's a, a lot of advantages to using this thing. So I want to make sure that we are reset. And now I can kind of, you know, we can kind of come over here to this spot and let's say some of this nebulosity here and we'll go ahead and reset our zoom and again I'm just going to move this stretch factor up just a little bit maybe to like 0.9 or 1 and you can see that it's bringing everything up and then if we want to we can pull it up even more with the local stretch intensity one and one things are getting a little blown out there in the center so you know that's kind of unfortunate but you know Pleiades is very very difficult for sure now one thing you can also do at this point is we have a shadows point here as well and a highlight so you know you could bring down the highlights if you want to and tame some of that stuff down and you can see that you're it's going to take a little while to kind of pick up, but you can see that you can still retain, you know, most of the actual stuff that you're looking for there. So we can pull that down a little bit and then we can pull this number over a little bit and you'll see that our background is going to start to darken a little bit as well. So I like that. So I am just going to accept that and we will reset this once again. And again, that's kind of like where we're at right there. Don't worry about like how noisy and everything it looks. You can always take care of that down the road. So we'll reset this again. And at this point, 
you could pretty much say you're done if you wanted to, uh, but we can go into the actual saturation if we want to, and we can actually pull the saturation up a little bit on the image. And you know, you don't a little goes a long way with that, so don't go too crazy with it. But you can just see how much more beautiful color we just added to the image everywhere. It just looks amazing. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and stop everything there. And you know, you might think that, hey, that just looks a little too stretched, and maybe we did go a little bit further than we needed to but there's definitely ways to come around that. So we could go into Noise Exterminator, we could go into Star Exterminator, and we could start working on this actual image. So if we pull up Noise Exterminator here, and now we went through and smoothed all that stuff out, making that look really good. Go ahead and hide that right there. And then we can go into Star Exterminator here, and we can actually go ahead and pull the stars out and then we could dial back that image a little bit. So now that we've pulled our stars out of the image, you can just take a look here and see just how much dust and stuff there is. It is just everywhere inside this image. And we can pull and make a clone of this off here and work on that and try a couple different things. You know, we can try a dynamic background extraction. We can just do something simple like some curves work. So we could go into the curves transformation and we could just try pulling down the black point a little bit, which really might be all that we need to do right here. I mean, that looks fantastic as it is. Maybe try to boost those highlights up again, give that a little bit of a nudge. And there you go. You know, there is a perfect starting point, an amazing stretch going on, all kinds of great stuff. And we could also go back into here and do a dynamic background extraction as well. And we could take and reposition our points and place them in places that we know are going to be dark. And we can try to pull a little bit of that out that way as well. So just let me maneuver these around a little bit. Now if we do a subtraction on this and see exactly what we get, you know, there you go. You've got that option there. And now, of course, you could go back in, adjust it however you want till your hearts are content. And the best thing about it now is we can throw our stars back in and our stars were really controlled and we can come up with a super easy, awesome looking image right off the bat. So all we need to do is just put our stars back and I need to change the identifier here. And there is that image right there, guys. And you know, of course, if you liked the way one of these other ones looked, you could always just throw the stars back into that as well. You know, if we wanted to just go ahead and dump them back into here, I think this one could maybe use a little bit of tweak. We could pull out just a little bit of red out of that one. Bring up the real time preview here. Just kind of pull that back just a touch. And boom, another awesome image of this. So show you that how ghs can work and how easy it is to pull out just amazing detail it's super easy to get it very fine control for youtube and for everything else i pushed all this a little bit too for far for everybody but you can see just how powerful it is our stars are well contained we can still do some kind of star reduction or minimization if we wanted to using some of bill's awesome tools but hey, you know, for an image to process and share to everybody just within a few minutes, all of the great tools that we're using, like Blur Exterminator, Noise Exterminator, everything, just fantastic what's going on in here. Just a super awesome image literally in no time at all. So that's the way we like it here. So thanks for everybody for subscribing. Let me know if you got any questions. We'll talk to you all later. Peace.